Hello and welcome to the GE Healthcare presentation. My name is Arsen Bayram and I am the Body and Oncology MR Director. Today, I'm joined by Professor Harshingani from MGH to talk about prostate imaging elevated by deep learning. Before we begin, I also would like to extend our gratitude to the organizers for providing us the opportunity to connect with you. We all know prostate MRI can be challenging. SNR and high resolution are crucial, but it comes at the expense of prolonged exam or patient comfort, especially if an indirect coil is utilized. Today, prostate MRI is a delicate balancing act between image quality, productivity, and patient comfort. What if you no longer had to choose? At GE Healthcare, we are excited to share our latest product innovations that we believe break you free from these constraints. Air IQ Edition brings award-winning air coils with revolutionary air recon DL algorithm to MR, and prostate MRI is one of the biggest benefactors. Air recon DL is a pioneering deep learning-based algorithm embedded into the GE reconstruction pipeline that works across all anatomies and contrasts. It removes image noise and ringing during image reconstruction, which in turn increases productivity by enabling shorter scan times. Air Recon DL delivers sharper and clearer MR images by taking advantage of the true fidelity of the MR signal. It is flexible and allows users to program the preferred SNR improvement as part of the protocol. Let's look at the Air Recon DL closer and prostate imaging, focusing on arguably the two most important contrasts, diffusion-weighted imaging and T2-weighted images. Here we have a B800 diffusion-weighted image and the corresponding ADC map. Air Recon DL delivers significant boost to the image quality and the resulting ADC maps. Mean ADC remains the same, but the standard deviation gets tighter because of noise removal. On the right-hand side, we have an endorectal MRI, axial T2 weighted scan. Bright hotspots from the endorectal coil plus the motion artifacts hinders the image quality. We then remove the endorectal channel and just using the surface coils data, we reconstructed the image using air recon DL. Resulting image quality maintains the great SNR the fundamental reason why we use the endorectal coil in the first place, without the challenges of the endorectal coil associated with that. In fact, five of the radiologists consistently scored a recon DL surface coil images higher than the endorectal coil images with conventional reconstruction. More details can be found in the publication with our collaborators from MD Anderson Cancer Center on this topic. Air Recon DL is already installed at several hundred sites globally, and what we are seeing is better image quality with shorter exam times. Here's a 3T example. T2 images reduced down to about 90 seconds each, while the diffusion with three acquired B values of 50, 500, and 850 in four minutes of scan time. High quality diffusion images produce exceptional synthesized B1500 and ADC maps as well. Total exam time, including the dynamics, is well under 15 minutes with better quality than before. One can argue that maybe even a more impactful results can be seen at one and a half T. Here's an example of Pirates compliant T2 weighted images as well as the B1000 diffusion weighted image collected with air coil and air recon DL, all in 10 and a half minutes of total scan time. Analysis and reporting is equally important to increase the reach and access of prostate MRI. This is another area artificial intelligence can have profound impact. GE's ProView solution utilizes deep learning in prostate segmentation, automated PSA density reporting, as well as preposition sector map to streamline the reporting. Once we saw the profound impact of air recon DL, we decided to make it available across the entire install base. So the Air Recon DL revolution continues, and we continue to deploy this innovative technology into the hands of our customers and patients, 
not just at 3T, but also at one and a half T, not just new systems, but existing systems, no matter how old your system is. I encourage you all to watch the unmissable video to learn more about Air Recon DL and to talk to your GE representative about potential upgrade. With this, I am pleased to welcome Dr. Harishin Yani, Professor of Radiology at Harvard Medical School and the Director of Body Translational MRI at MGH to provide a more in-depth presentation around prostate MRI and Air Recon DL. Thank you, Mukesh, for joining us today and please take it away. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank GE for giving me an opportunity to share our experience on how we can uh, dramatically improve uh, use of MR in prostate cancer uh, imaging. And so the question uh, is why prostate cancer? And as you can see from this uh, infographic that one every three minutes, a man is diagnosed with prostate cancer and every 17 minutes, a man dies from prostate cancer. So. Well, largely the disease can be indolent. You can see it in terms of numbers, it affects a large uh, group of men and it can have morbidity in terms of uh, death, especially if it is clinically significant cancer. So it is a real um, you know, healthcare challenge that we are facing. And so if you talk to a recently diagnosed a patient with prostate cancer, what does that individual want? Uh, so basically they want to ensure that their diagnosis is correct. And once you know they are diagnosed, um, uh, they want to undergo definitive treatment so that their cancer is cured. Um, and so that, that brings us back to the question is how do we ensure that the diagnosis is done in a non-invasive manner and it is, it is accurate depiction of what the patient has as a tumor. And so just to give an example, this is a gentleman, a 57 year old patient who had rising PSA uh, and had two prior biopsies which were negative. Uh, and despite that, you know, there was a high uh, clinical index of suspicion that this patient had cancer because his PSA kept rising. And as you can see on MR, the, uh, the image on your left is a T2 weighted image where the arrow points to an area of abnormality and that area shows restricted diffusion on the image on your right. And once this was pointed out to the urologist, they targeted this specific area and this came back as a Gleason 8 cancer for which appropriate therapy was uh, instituted. And so, you know, from a patient perspective, uh, he would have wanted to know this information uh, before he was sent for biopsy in order to, you know, uh, put the needle in the right place and get the correct answer. So that, in a sense, is what is required in terms of uh, prostate cancer um, detection. So that was at least in uh, four plus three uh, cancer in the, in the and so if you look at the uh, published literature, uh, this uh, sentence sort of summarizes all the major papers and uh, the, the sentence alludes to for most men, one can promise precision if you perform MRI first, and that is MRI before biopsy. And, and those were the four sort of key papers that came out um, uh, in the last uh, you know, uh, three to four years that have attested to the fact that multi-parametric MR can do a very good job at detecting cancer prior to um, uh, undergoing biopsy and therefore you can target that area specifically and so if you look at the uh, multi-parametric MR protocol that we do at MGH and we do about 40 to 45 exams um, uh, in a week at MGH so and the number keeps rising uh, because of the um, utility of accurately detecting the tumor prior to uh, doing a biopsy so we start with localizers we do triplane T2s and that is sort of the major anatomic sequence in terms of looking at the gland itself and also trying to detect the lesion in terms of multiplanar capabilities. Uh, following that, we do a large field of UT2. And again, the reason for doing that is to look at the entire pelvis, uh, look for lymphadenopathy, look for ancillary findings in the pelvis. And then we have the functional sequence, the DWI, uh, that is sort of the uh, complementary sequence to the T2s for um, detection of the cancer as well as and trying to assign some kind of a biologic grade by measuring the ADC value. And then finally giving contrast and doing contrast enhancement, which is a perfect complement to the T2N to the DWI in terms of lesion detection. Uh, this entire process takes about 25 minutes uh, and that's sort of table time, which means you know the slots have to be close to 30, 35 minutes in terms of putting the patient on the table and the biggest time sink in this protocol is a DWI, which takes approximately 30% of the protocol time and then followed by the triplane T2. And so if we can make this exam faster, 
you know, that certainly would be very beneficial uh, from a patient perspective and also a throughput perspective in terms of the increasing numbers that we are seeing with these with this specific disease entity. So how can we reduce the scan time and not lose accuracy? So as I told you, the two main uh, time sinks are the T2 and the diffusion weighted sequences. So as far as the T2 goes, as I mentioned, we do it in multiple planes. So you have to acquire it in axial, coronal, and sagittal uh, plane. And you know, if each of these takes about two and a half minutes, we are talking roughly about you know eight to nine minutes of scan time in terms of looking at the T2 weighted sequences. And so this was one of the earlier um, studies that we did uh, working with Arno and his team where we tried to reduce the number of signal averages. So going down from two and a half, which we were traditionally doing in all three planes to a single average, and thereby dramatically reducing the scan time. And then using the ARDCon EL algorithm, we were able to reconstruct the images uh, using the single next images with comparable image quality to so that was seen in, in, you know, when the averages were two and a half. So as you can see, with significant scan time uh, saving for the multiple planes, the DL recon algorithm clearly allowed us to dramatically reduce the scan time on the T2 weighted sequences. And this is something that we are routinely deploying now in our protocol, allowing a significant time gain for us. And so the next big time sink is the DWI. And this is something that we are hesitant to skimp on because DWI forms the uh, you know, basic framework for lesion detection in, in prostate cancer. It not only provides the main sequence for looking and detecting lesions in the peripheral zone, but also adds value in the transition zone in terms of confirming things that we find on the t 2 weighted sequences. So we do not want to compromise on DWI under any pretext uh, for saving time. You want to have the maximum uh, accuracy that you can derive from this specific type of uh, sequence. And so if you look at the Pyrides documentation, they recommend a high B value of at least 1400. What we have found in our experience, the magic number is 1600, and we typically use a B value of 2000 um, in our clinical uh, uh, multiparametric protocol. And here is the reason why. Uh, so if you look at the image on your left, that's the B value of 1500. Now one can make the argument that you can see the lesion on the left uh, peripheral zone. It's a little asymmetric compared to the right, but there is significant signal still in the gland. If you compare that to the image on the right, which is with the B value of 2000, you can see that the normal gland is essentially nulled out. And the contrast to noise between tumor, uh, which is in the left mid peripheral zone, is, is, is much uh, you know, better in terms of, a, and that truly brings out the lesion and allows us to detect the lesions uh, more accurately, even if they are small in size. So that's why we prefer a high B value. Uh, now clearly, the disadvantage with the high B value is the time. You know, we, it takes a long time to acquire. We typically acquire these images with multiple acquisitions so that it's typically a next of around 16 that gives us that image quality. So it wouldn't be nice if EL-based algorithms can take the raw data from the diffusion uh, and reconstruct uh, with, with uh, reduction in scan time and thereby allowing us to reduce the protocol time even further. And so this is where we sort of, after the successful um, advent of the ARDL algorithm in the T2-weighted sequences, we moved on to diffusion with it. Um, and so um, just to show you a case example to highlight how incremental benefit of using uh, DL-based algorithms to um, reduce scan time and, and without losing scan quality. So this is a 70-year-old patient where there has been an elevated PSA and there is a high index of clinical suspicion of prostate cancer. Now, if you look at these uh, DL-based uh, T2-weighted multiplanar acquisitions, you know, you, you really don't see much abnormality here. And just based on these images, you wouldn't call anything abnormal on these images. Looking at the uh, low B value of uh, 200, the image on your left is a standard DWI, and the image on the right is an air recon uh, uh, DL reconstructed from the same raw data. Uh, and you can see that there is a slight improvement in the image quality with the air recon uh, DL on the B value of 200. And when we move to the B value of 2000, again, the image on your left is what we would acquire by standard means where it's typically a next of around 16, where you can see the uh, lesion in the left peripheral zone, which was even in retrospect, not appreciated on the T2-weighted sequences. And the image on your right is the air recon DL DWI with significant improvement in image quality. Uh, so the question is, air recon DL definitely gives you an advantage in terms of better image quality. Now, can we take this uh, incremental advantage in quality and translate it into shorter exam times without loss of image quality. And that's what we are we set out to do and, and are 
continuing to do and study. So as you can see in this row of images, uh, the, the left panel where it says 18 necks, uh, the image on the top is what we would acquire typically. Uh, image on the bottom is the air recon decal, uh, DL reconstructed um, image from the raw data. And the image time you can see is three, and a, three minutes and 40 seconds without any air DL recon, whereas the image on the left, uh, the image uh, subsequently on the, uh, and the bottom is uh, the one which is uh, showing the, uh, the improved image quality. Now, as we drop the necks, you can see that if you conventionally acquire the images, there is a drop in image quality. But if you use air uh, DL recon algorithms, you will see that despite reducing the scan time, you still maintain the image quality. And that's really what we need. We don't want to compromise on image quality and at the same time dramatically reduce uh, the, uh, the scan time. So uh, here is just side-by-side -side comparison showing that using the air recon DL algorithms, you dramatically reduce the scan time by reducing the number of necks, but you do not compromise on image quality. And so this builds on what we saw on the T2 weighted sequences in terms of also using for the DWI. And I think this is dramatically going to change uh, the way we uh, uh, perform these MRs in terms of you know, enhanced image quality and I'm not sacrificing image quality and gaining significantly gaining time advantage or temporal advantage, if you will. And so I think just you know, merely summating the overall scan time as I mentioned earlier, with our conventional protocol, it takes roughly about 25 to 30 minutes to acquire the images. And I think the 10-minute uh, or under exam time is, is uh, no longer a sort of dream. It can be a reality if you can take this air recon DL algorithms and apply them both to the T2 and to the diffusion-weighted images without significantly compromising the image quality. And, and so again, under 10 minutes exam you know, can be a reality. So here is... A, a sort of a snapshot of what that uh, exam would look like where you know you have high quality t2 weighted images you have a dwi images that are focused primarily to the prostate as well as the larger field of view and dynamic enhanced images that can be done around you know in, in 12 minutes and then if you can do the calculated b value in, addi in addition to that you can drop it down to under 10 minutes so this is you know it's not a pipe dream anymore it is becoming a reality and i think this is dramatically going to change uh, how we practice uh, and apply MR to prostate cancer patients. So I think in conclusion, multiparametric MR is needed for detecting clinically significant cancer. And as I said, the volume keeps going up because there clearly is, an, is a need for doing this MR prior to the patients getting biopsy because it can be used as a GPS to navigate uh, you know, the, the areas or to target for biopsy. Uh, we need to have good technique. Uh, that's what Pyride's documentation insists on. Uh, you cannot dilute the technique. And so anything that can enhance the quality and, and not sacrifice time, in fact, even gain, have, have the benefit of reduced scan time is, is very desirable to us. And that, I think, with the air recon DL techniques is becoming a reality. And as I said, a scan time under 10 minutes is uh, no longer a pipe dream, but will, will soon be you know, commonplace in terms of uh, performance of these, uh, of these images. So thank you once again. <laughs>